Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Adobe Lightroom project, we'll be talking about the settings to use to take your image from Lightroom and put it up on Instagram. And if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and, of course, share with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos in the future. And if you want to learn a lot more about Adobe's Lightroom program, look at my complete training and you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Obviously, if you want to have the best images possible up on Instagram, you'll want to adjust those images before you put them up. And one of the best programs for doing that, of course, is Adobe's Lightroom program. Now, there are a few things you need to take into consideration though when you're doing that. First, of course, you want to do as much as possible inside of Lightroom with all the standard adjustment tools over here, all your standard development tools. Make sure that your image is as good as possible before you upload it. Now, once you've uploaded it, you also can use some of the Instagram filters as well. I used one in here to give it a bit of a more contrast. Look, that's an Instagram filter I applied there. But fairly straightforward, just you know, do the best that you possibly can on that. Now, when you're ready to upload your picture, there are a couple more things to take into consideration. The first is the size of your image. Notice how this is kind of a square format in here. This is the largest standard size for the automated cropping that Instagram will do. It basically puts it into a square format and if you had a long picture, a horizontal picture like I have back here, it's going to crop that to a square image. We can show what that looks like. I'll just go over here, grab the crop tool, and let's set the aspect ratio here at one to one. So there's a basic square crop right there. We can move it around, but that's basically what you get if you just allow Instagram to do the automatic cropping for you. It's not the best composition that you can get on that. Let's set this back to as shot. And if you do a horizontal image like this, you'll be getting a real small picture. Let me just bring the Instagram back up again. So if I did this as a horizontal, I'd have a little picture in the middle here. Not really ideal. Instagram is designed, of course, for smartphones, and smartphones are a vertical format, as you can see here. And because of that vertical format, they really work better for portrait or vertical pictures. But you can get a bigger picture by choosing the right format, the right cropping for that. And that is a cropping of 4x5. That's the largest cropping. It's a standard 8x10 just cut in half. Let's take a look at that with our cropping tool. So the first thing you want to do after, of course, you've done all of your image adjustments and all of that stuff, the first thing you want to do then is to crop. Grab your crop tool here, crop overlay, and then set this to 4x5, 8x10. Now this is a horizontal, because it's a horizontal picture, just tap the X key and it reverses that. It's now a portrait mode in the 4x5 format. You can then move your picture around to get the best composition for, I think, a little bit of her hand showing over there and getting her face basically in the middle section here looks pretty good. I don't want to lose the fingers. So about there looks pretty good, I think, for my 4x5 ratio. Now, it's not the square we have. We're actually cutting in a little bit on the sides, but this width will still fit the full width of the Instagram screen. And you get a little taller picture that way. This will give you the biggest possible picture is the 4x5 format. I'll just click on done and there's our 4x5 format. Okay, so we've already done all of our development stuff and anything else you want to do, all your fancy Lightroom tricks. We've cropped the image now to its largest size visually that you can get inside of the Instagram window. We're now ready to export this out and use for Instagram. Now, once you've exported it, the way you get it from your computer up to Instagram depends upon you know, all kinds of different factors, the way, way you like to work and so forth. I found the easiest way is just to upload to Dropbox and then grab that from Dropbox with your smartphone and pop it up there. Of course, you also can email it yourself. You know, other ways of doing it, there are programs that you can link your computer 
to your smartphone, do it that way. But those are a bit more clumsy. I just drop it in, in Dropbox. But you want to have your image in the right format to do that. Now, the problem with this, one thing you'll run into is that Instagram is going to compress the images when they put them up online. So you want to, if possible, handle any of that compression as much as possible anyway here inside of Lightroom because it has better tools for doing that compression. Just, just does a better job. You get a better looking image. So we want to take this image, do the compression here so that Instagram does as little as possible. So that just requires a couple settings up in the export function. Go up to File and come down to Export. And here we go. Choose your export location. Let's hide that. File naming, again, it's up to you if you want to name it to a, a custom name or not. Up to you. Video we're not dealing with, so close that one down. Now we have the ones that are important. File settings, image sizing, and output sharpening. I always leave this one alone. You should have already handled any sharpening back when you were doing your developing inside of Lightroom. So let's just close that one down. Close down metadata. At this point, you can add in your watermark if you want to. That's up to you. And on post-processing, nothing on that one. Leave that one alone. So we're left then with the file settings and image size. First one up here is JPEG. This is the format that is used by Instagram. If you export to any of these other formats, then Instagram is going to be doing the conversion to JPEG. You don't want that to happen. You want Lightroom to do your JPEG conversion for the best quality. So go ahead and change the image format to JPEG. Most likely you'll be in the sRGB color space and that's fine. And on quality, just go clear to the top on that. Just max that out on your quality setting to get the best JPEG possible. Now we have the image sizing and this is where we need to do our final adjustments. Now the way Instagram is set up it has a width, let me just bring that back up here, a width across here of 1080 is as large as you can go. If your image is bigger than 1080, it's going to either crop that down or reduce the size of the image to fit that 1080. So 1080 is our max. We want to have that maxed out at 1080. Just, it's the width, not the height, just the width is 1080. So let's go over here and let's set this since we're doing a portrait, the long edge is the sides, the short edge is the top and the bottom, so you want to have the short edge. And set this at 1080. So this is now going to be pre-sizing your image to the exact size we need for the, or the maximum size that Instagram will allow, so that Instagram is not going to be doing any resizing on us. So we've already done our 4x5, We've given the width the largest it can go, so this will then set that in exactly for the right size, for maximum size on Instagram, without Instagram doing any size changes. This whole size change stuff is being done here inside of Lightroom. Now, if your image is smaller than that, it really shouldn't be. This really shouldn't come into play over here because you already should have an image bigger than this when you're working inside of Lightroom. If not, you know, go for a larger image and then you know, bring your image down, get better quality that way. On the resolution over here, you can use different resolutions, that's fine, but Instagram is going to bring the resolution down to make the file size as small as possible to work again on their service. It's designed for fast viewing of images. I'll just set this at 72. So there we go. There is your basic settings, and this is pixels per inch, 72. And that's it. That's all you have to do. So what we've done is we have gone in and we've cropped our image to 4 by 5 and we're going to be outputting to JPEG quality of 100 color space is the sRGB resize to fit your short edge that is the bottom edge of your picture here the width of your picture on a vertical is going to be 1080 and resolution at 72 then just go ahead and export that out to any location you want to on your hard drive, drop that over in a Dropbox or email it to yourself or however you want to get the image from your computer over to your smartphone and you're all set to go. This will then 
limit the amount of work that Instagram does in your image. Hopefully it shouldn't do anything with these settings and that will give you the best quality since we've done all of this adjustment size and so forth here inside a Lightroom and we're not relying on Instagram's lower quality tools for doing those adjustments. So of course you always can if you want to go in and you know play with your Instagram filter and stuff like that. That's up to you. But there you go. There's the settings to get the most out of an image made in Lightroom or worked on in Lightroom to upload to Instagram. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.